Hi, everyone. So welcome to the live stream today. It's always a pleasure coming your way and uh, providing with Hi, some assistance so for you to prepare well for the August 2022 examination and most importantly, become successful. And today it's a very special session because uh, I want to share with you some strategies on how to study and then the habits that you must adopt in order to enable you to study effectively, but most importantly, retain majority of the things that you have studied so that when it is required in examination, in performance evaluation tests, in practicing questions, or even at the workplace, you will be able to accurately, accurately recollect what you have studied in that case. Because, you know, one of the things that uh, you need to understand is that I have been doing uh, this close to a decade since 2013. And over the years, one of the things that I've heard students saying all along over and over again is, Shira, oh, when I study, I find it difficult to recollect what I study. Or sometimes when I get to the exam hall, everything I study is out of my mind. Uh, or oh, oh, I find it difficult to retain information. Some people even go ahead to say that, hey, I think that because I am growing or I've grown, so I am not able to retain a lot of information. But you see, all of those things are just myths that people, uh, I believe that people talk about. But uh, there are ways through which you need to structure yourself up. There are habits that you need to consciously adopt in order for you to put yourself in the state of productivity, put your brain in the right states to be able to remember and recollect everything that you study. And that is exactly what I want to share with you today on the habits that you must adopt to study effectively and most importantly remember what you have studied and i see some of you guys joining you are welcome give us a thumbs up on the video it helps us a lot for the engagement also remember to share the video with somebody your colleagues friends and other people who would need this valuable strategies so that we will be able to together assist a lot of students to be able to uh, become successful. Now, if you're a follower of my work over the years, I have shared some strategies on the things that you must do in order for you to retain a lot of information because that is primary to me uh, as an educator. And so what I wanna share with you today are some of the strategies that I have been using myself and these are a little bit advanced strategies because I'm going to be engaging and talking to you a little bit personal today because we want to really deal with the core issues that will enable us to really, really become successful. So we're going to go a little personal today. We're going to go a little uh, hard today. And the goal is to be able to enable you to really know why you have the problem of low memory or weak memory and how you can 10x that as soon as possible. Now, for the August 2022 examination, we have about six more weeks to go for the examination, six weeks. And I believe that in the next three weeks, if you implement some of the strategies that we are about to share and we are about to discuss today, then you can really increase your chances of remembering things and also pass the examination. So that is what I want to share with you today. But for disclaimer purposes, the strategies I'm going to share with you today are strategies that I learned from my brain coach, Jim Quick, from his book, Limitless. I would recommend that you get the audio version of the book on Audible. I think it's a little about it's not even up to $20, so I think so. So you can get an audio version of the book called Limitless by Jim Quick, or even check up his YouTube channel, Limitless uh, Jim Quick on YouTube. is a world-recognized memory and brain expert, and I believe that a lot of the things or everything that he may, he discusses, when I implement them, put them in, in, in my schedules, it changes the way I see myself, and it changes how productive... I become. And so that is one thing I want to share with you today from his book, Limitness, on how you can study and how to be very effective at it. So let me know in a comment session any questions that you have uh, for me. I would want to uh, share some thought with you on your questions. Let me know where you are watching from. Something you would want me to share my thought on. What has been your challenge over the years when it comes to, or even as you study for the August 2022 examination? What are some of the challenges that you are you are facing or that you are faced with? Give them, uh, bring them up. Let's see uh, what I can share my thought on with you. And let's see how together we can uh, really assist you guys to become successful and pass the examination. 
So uh, let me know. I think I have a problem a little bit with my feet. Let's see what we have. I don't know what's going on with my feet, but I think we should be okay now. Okay. All right. So let me know any questions for me. Hit me up. I want to hear from you guys. Um, any questions? What has been your challenge when it comes to studying? What is your way of studying? Uh, what has helped you? Maybe share again uh, with a community as well. How, how do you study specific subjects like public sector accounting and finance? How do you do it? Audits and assurance. How do you do it? Taxation. How do you do it? Do you have any specific strategies that have uh, work for you over the years, probably it will be pro uh, good to share with the community. And as we share all of these together, and I'm going to be reading your comments, we will together assist a lot of people in that case. Now, remember that you can download our mobile application, the Insura Premium mo mobile application on the Google Play Store or the App Store. We are updating uh, the uh, video library there with a lot of content to enable you to get access to a lot of free content that are not even available on YouTube to help you to prepare well for the examination. And you also get access to some blog posts, notes, and others to assist you to pass the examination. So remember that you can download the mobile application on the Google Play Store or the App Store. Insura Premium, the name on the channel, the name on the page, the name uh, that you see display, that is the name of the mobile application and you can download it. Now, we are in week seven for our preparation towards the ICA, I guess, 2022 examination. And I believe that it is time for me to share some thought with you on how you can study very well. Like I said, we're going to be a little personal today. We're going to be a little personal today and uh, I'm going to crush you a little bit. All right. But that is what we want to do. And that is how we want to structure ourselves up. So let's get into the strategies. Um, Samuel Lamte, I see you, Joseph Cheneboa. I see you, uh, Puku Anna. I see you, uh, Asaka Alewu. Alewu, sorry. Uh, I see you as well on YouTube. Uh, Autry Bonsu said, please, say uh, good evening. Please, I need a strategy to pass case study and advance audits. Um, I think I've shared a couple of thoughts on these things, but Case study, passing case study, you need to really understand the scope of the entire syllabus and how it is supposed to be done. Number one, you need to have an idea of uh, the issue in relation to the key modules that you have to focus on. All right. So I believe you are attending lectures, which is one of the rules you don't want to break if you want to pass the exams, all other things being equal. So since you are attending lectures, make sure that you, if you are attending lectures, then you need to ensure that you understand the key modules, okay? Pistol framework, when is it used? Porter's Fire Forces, when is it used? Porter's Diamond, when is it used? Uh, BCG module, when is it used? Unsolved Matrix, when is it used? Uh, the issue relating to, um, uh, how do we call it? SWOT analysis, when is it used? Okay, you must understand the key modules and when they are called up. That is very crucial. And then you need to understand how to analyze the case study when presented to you in the exam hall. You need to analyze the case study when presented to you in the exam hall. It means you need to practice. Now, I remember over the weekend in our strategic case study class, we, we did that. So we took a full case study and then we started engaging the case study, identifying the modules, the statements that are made for you to know what the examiner means or what the case study means. And it is really uh, interesting for uh, Raz to have that experience and with the students. And so that is one thing you must understand. Knowing the key modules and not by chewing baba, not by cramming it. Like, oh, when we say protest five forces, political factors, economic factors, that's not what we mean. How do you figure it out from the case study interpretation? Are you getting the idea? So if you want to pass the strategic case study exams, that's the idea. Now, aside the modules, governance is crucial there. You must understand issues about corporate governance. Ethics is fundamental there. Then some financial issues, uh, budgeting, financial performance, uh, dealing with issues relating to the business plan for a case study of all of or, or all that. And like I said, if you're attending lectures, definitely you will be guided and provided with some of these things for you to be able to 
uh, understand it pretty well. So that is what I would say there, Archery Bonsu. I see a question coming in from Poku Anna. Let me take that uh, because it relates critically as well to what we are doing. One of my problem problems and I want to improve on is critical thinking or basically just thinking outside of the box because some questions test on that and not what you have been uh, thought. Yeah, uh, again, it goes back to the issues in relation to uh, how you arrange your thoughts, which is something I'm going to be sharing with you today. So after some of the strategies we will be sharing with you today, you can improve your critical thinking because there is a way you need to think when you are before a question. So let's say that um, I, I have a question. Now, this is our advanced uh, audit and assurance book. So let's say I have a question on advanced audit and assurance and I read a question. Now, how do I know this is the answer to the question or what the examiner is asking? It depends on some factors that I had in my mind before I read the question. So if you have some preoccupied mind, preoccupied thought, preoccupied knowledge, then you are going to distance yourself from the requirement of the question. And so we're going to be going through some of these strategies to enable you to really uh, increase that. So let's get excited about it. I see some of you guys joining. We are welcome. Smash the like button on the uh, channel. Share the video. Let's reach as many students as possible watching the video. In case you've not subscribed to the channel also, why not? Subscribe and click the bell icon so that when I go live, you will be notified. So like I said, I'm going to get a little personal today. When I say I'm going to get a little personal, it means I'm going to crush you a little bit. And the goal for that is for you to understand that your brain is limitless. All of those things, oh, Inshira, I'm getting older. Oh, Inshira, hmm, my children. Now you have to do the children. You have to do the work. You have to do the housewife. Please. Your brain is limitless. That is the first thing I want you to take away from here. There is nothing like, oh, I am aging, so my brain capacity is reducing. No, there is nothing like that. So there is nothing like, oh, I don't have the ability to retain information. You are not trained to have the memory or to retain information. You need to be trained. So it's not about, oh, I am 55 years, I'm 45 years, I'm 70 years, so my memory is weak. No, you have to train your memory to absorb the information that is necessary and keep it so you can recall. So let's first get one of the myths out. The fact that you are old, the fact that you are a mother, the fact that you are a father, the fact that you work 16 jobs does not mean you cannot study effectively. The fact that you have a lot of things on your mind does not mean you cannot retain a lot of information. The brain is limitless. So that is the starting point I want you to have. It's a myth. And so we want to deal with it off. You don't have a problem with your head. You are only not trained on how to use your head. That's all. You're only not trained on how to, because remember, you've been in the university, some of you in high school. Did you ever take any class on how to study or how to study effectively? Did you, did you ever take any class on how to retain a lot of information on what you study? It's not taught anywhere. So you are not trained. So the only thing you know is Baba. You know Baba, you chew on, you pick your audit book. Then you are chewing. Oh, ethics. Okay, confidentiality. Oh, integrity means professional competence and do care. Okay, okay. Money laundering. Okay, stages of money laundering. Placement. Placement is the. That's all you know. And you chew, you chew, you chew, you chew, you chew. Now, when a question is before you, you cannot recollect because your brain has to be trained. And that is exactly what I want to do with you in the next few minutes to provide you with some strategies on how you can train your brain to be productive. And these things I'm going to share with you are things that I have used personally. I'm using personally because I don't share anything that has not been tested in my own life. And I've seen it done what it is supposed to do. All right. I can pick a test read it in the shortest possible amount of time, retain the key thing that I have to retain, and then go in lecture excellently. 
I know because these strategies work. The only thing that I need from you is to understand me, to be open and to be able to understand what we are going to go through. That way, you will definitely go through it. So let me bring up my screen and let me begin with some of the issues here real, real quick. You're going to love this. You're going to love this today. I guarantee you. So habits to study effectively. Habits to study effectively. Habit number one, the state of your mind. The state of your mind. Listen, whatever you are studying, it is important that you come in with the right state of mind. That is the first thing. It means that you need to be careful about your emotions behind the book. So let's say from work, you, you work from, you get, went to work from 4.30, uh, you left home 4.30 a.m., I don't know though, but then you came back home around 10 p.m. Then he said, oh, this whole day I have not studied though. Let me pick a book and study. At that 10 p.m., what is the state of your mind? Chances are you are stressed for the day. Chances are you, you, you are not in your best mood. Well, you know what you got to do? You freshen up and sleep, not study. Because some of you, you will sit behind the book 10 p.m. and you're not doing anything. You are lying to yourself that you are studying, but the truth is you are not doing anything. The state of your mind, your emotion is very critical. You cannot be learning and at the same time thinking about other things. You cannot be learning and at the same time thinking about other things. So your, the state of your mind is very important. So what does that mean? It means you have to consciously block other thoughts trying to take space whilst you are studying. Very, very important. You have to consciously block other thoughts. Trying to take space whilst you study. Now, what does that mean? L let me give you some practical examples. Now, like I said, I'm going to get a little personal today, so just stay with me carefully. You pick a book and you are studying, whatever it is. Then you are thinking about fuel prices. Okay? Or you are thinking, you are thinking about um, your rent. You're thinking about probably your children's school fees, your children's school fees, or you are thinking about somebody, a loved one. Maybe some broken heart is worrying you, or your wife, or your husband. Listen, at that time, whatever you learn is BS. It's waste of time. It's nonsense. Nothing will stay in your head. Why? Because your brain is not active to remember anything. Now, Inshira, how can I remove the fuel price from my head? How can I remove the rent from my head? How can I remove the children's school fees from my head? I have got broken hearts. How can I stop thinking about it? You must consciously block out those thoughts. Now, according to Jim Quick, it will be prudent for you to set time to worry. See, have a time where you can just worry about fuel prices. Have a time where you can think just about your rent. But then the time that you pick the book, don't think about other things at that same time. Otherwise, everything you are doing, it's nonsense. That's the first thing. Now, this, is, this requires practice. You're not going to do this overnight. It requires practice. You have to be conscious about it. It requires a lot of consistency and a lot of hard work. But blocking consciously other thoughts whilst you pick the book is the first gateway to you becoming successful and effectively studying. And you see, many of these emotions, we bring them up on ourselves. Many of these emotions, we bring them up on ourselves. 
That is why it affects us even the way we study and the way we become productive generally. So let's say, for instance, you buy a car. So you have a car. And then whatever it is, you say, oh, fuel prices are now going up. Oh, and fuel prices are now going up. Oh, this government will kill us. So listen, your thinking will not affect the fuel price. Maybe the car you are driving is a wrong car. Sell it up and buy maybe some bicycle or moto, and you'll be comfortable with that. And that is about financial intelligence. And the class here is not financial intelligence, so I'm not going to talk about anything on, in that tangent. But that is the idea about that. You brought the problem on yourself. You don't buy a car because you can you have 70,000, 80,000, or 100,000 to buy the car. You buy a car because you can sustain it. You can keep it. So if fuel prices go up and you are thinking about how to fuel your car or you park your car at the fuel station or you go to the fuel station and you are filling 20 city, 30 city, and every day you are, you are having problems, it means that is not your car. You, you, are, you are worrying yourself. And those emotions affect the way you study. Because when you pick your book, you are thinking about fuel prices. You broke because the next money in your account, you can't even buy fuel for full tank any longer. You are the one causing your own problems. Or rent. Maybe where you are living, it's above your means. But you want to show off. You want to let people know that, yeah, me too, I did. Okay, you too, you did. That emotions is affecting all other aspects of your lives. So that is the first thing, the state of your mind. You must have the right state of mind to enable you to retain the information that you are looking at. That's the first thing. That's the first thing. Now, I, I don't know how you're going to do it, but you have to consciously block thoughts. And, and I, when I started with this strategy, for instance, in my own life, I had a problem with it because I get distracted. Sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm learning, then all of a sudden a thought will cross my mind. Hey, you have to do this. Okay, you have to call this person. Oh, you have to talk to this person. Oh, that's, that's some way. So I have to consciously, gradually, even now I still struggle with that. But then gradually I am able to remove some thoughts and focus on the work at hand. That is the first thing, the state of your mind. Please, that is the first way. So if you learn and it doesn't stick, check your emotions. What was your mindset at the time that you were learning? What were you thinking about? Maybe you have broken hearts. I don't know why you have broken hearts by this time of the, of the world, though, but you have broken hearts. And, you know, I don't know what broken, broken heart is, though, but you have broken hearts. They are thinking about it. Please, bro. You better do something productive, make some money, and take your life to the next level. That is number one, the state of your mind. The state of your mind. Let me know if there are any questions. Drop it in the chat for me. I want to hear from you guys. Number two, to study effectively is your posture. Posture is everything. That's number two, your posture. What is your posture when you pick a book? What is your posture when you pick a book? It's very critical. Now, let me bring my screen up and then show you a number of things. You pick a book you are studying, then you go like this. Then some, some of you will cross your leg and then you are there reading. You are telling your brain that it is relaxation time. What you are reading is just for relaxation purposes. What you are reading doesn't need any attention, so it should go away. Or you lie down. Some of you on your bed. Then you, you said, oh, I'm laying on my bed. That place mentally, your brain knows that on your bed, you are not laying there. So anything you do there is for relaxation. So then how do you, now, right now, let's say right now, even what you are watching right now, what is your posture? How are you seated? Are you seated straight? 
Like, what's the look? What is the smile on your face? All these things affect the brain, passes information to the brain. Because when you sit straight like that, you are attentive with a little frown face. Now, it's not that you are doing your, but a little frown face, like, and you are serious, you are looking at it, that is active. You are telling your brain that, hey, the way I'm seated straight with my spinal cord straight, it tells the brain that, hey, listen, this time we got to be serious. This time, whatever we need has to be stored. But if you are learning, then you do like this. They are listening to the lectures. They look like this. Please, that is a waste of time. That is why it won't stick. Because your posture tells your brain that what you are learning, what you are listening to, it's bullshit. What you are learning, what you are listening to is nonsense. What you are learning, what you are listening to doesn't need to be stored. So that is the second thing. Your posture. Your posture. So if you have the right state of mind, you need to have the right posture. Don't pick a book and slag and say you are learning. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. So check your posture as well. Be conscious about it. And make sure that you are always seated straight with a beautiful smile on your face or some level of seriousness. And it's going to help you. Don't be sloppy. Don't relax. Don't be doing other things. Just be straight. And that will help you to really, really become successful. And that is the second thing. So number one, the state of your mind. Number two, your posture. That is everything. That is everything. Number three is going to be, number three is going to practice what is referred to as spaced repetition. Space repetition. Now, you see, the way our brain is structured is to let our brain know that what we are studying, it's important. So we have to consciously practice spaced repetition. What does that mean? It means that if in the morning, let's say 5.30 a.m., you studied something. Let's say you read something on uh, whatever. Let's say you read something on PIFA in public sector, 5.30 a.m., you read a whole PIFA. That's nice. Before you go to bed, 9.30 p.m. or maybe 10 p.m. before you go to bed, you have to go through that again. The PIFA. Now, before you, you go through that, there is a fourth strategy that goes along with that, and it is called active recalls. Active recalls. What does that mean? So before you go over the PIFA again at 9.30 p.m. or 10 p.m. before you sleep, you try to see whether the things you studied, whether what you read in the uh, in the morning, how much uh, 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 how much of that do you actually remember or you can recollect. So that is where you need to grab a notepad, all right, and begin the write. If you don't have a notepad, you buy an exercise book. Exercise book is 3CD or whatever the heck. You buy an exercise book. Then you try to rewrite. What do you remember? Just write it up. So you read it on, at 5.30 a.m. You are reviewing it at 10 p.m. But write it out. Before you open the PIFA note again, grab a notepad and write out everything. Write it out. Whatever you can remember, write it out. Why are you doing that? Because now you compare your write out with the actual notes on PIFA that you read. What are you doing? You are practicing spaced repetition and also active recalls. And that tells your brain that, oh, this PIFA thing, it's important. Because you looked at it at 5.30 a.m. You are looking at it at 10 p.m. again. You are trying to recall everything and you are reading it again. So it means that it is important. We need to keep this information at a place or at a point where it can be what? Useful. 
So spaced repetition, active recalls. Don't read PIFA in the morning, then 10 p.m. when it gets home, go and read something else, IFRS 2. Or read something else, IAS 16. No, no, no. That, that is not an effective learning strategy. That is not an effective learning strategy. Oh, Ishira, how about, oh, I have PSA in the 5.30. Then when I get home, I have uh, another subject. No, that is not an effective way to study. Because when you do that and you just review the PIFA just once like that throughout the 24 hours, your brain is not going to emphasize on it pretty much. So spaced repetition as the reasonable interval. Now, that doesn't mean you do it for the morning like that and do for the evening, then the PIFA will stick. No. Maybe four days later, you have to do the same thing again. So maybe three or four days from now, then you go in there and then you grab your notepad again and you try to write out PIFA what you remember after four days or after three days. You, you write again, what do you remember about the IPSAS, about the PIFA? What are you doing? You are practicing spaced repetition and you are doing active recalls. You are trying to recall the things. So when you grab the notepad after three days, after four days, you find out what you remember. Then you compare it with your notes on the PIFA. Then you find out, did I improve? Now, as you do that, you are expanding the brain muscle. As you do that, you are telling your brain that this information is important. This information is crucial. Let's keep this information in the place where we can recall it as soon as possible. That is space repetition. That is active recall. So you have to change your study style. You have to change your study plan and ensure that you are consciously going over the same thing more than once. That way, the information gets to your brain that this is a very basic information or it's a crucial information that must be considered. That is very important. That is very important. Any questions, please? I see some questions coming up. I'm going to try to take them real quick. Any questions, please? Let me know. What is your study style? Um, are you getting some values uh, here? Any assistance, any clarity you want on something that you would want me to share my thought on? Uh, in that case, number one, we said your state of mind. That is where it all starts. Number two, your posture, the way you sit behind the book. Number three, space repetition and active recalls. The same thing being done over and over again use notepads it works it works write it out buy exercise book and rewrite the things that you are learning exercise book doesn't cost anything if you say oh exercise book is expensive oh the economy is hard now that is the wrong emotion you are using and again you are going back to square zero you are going back to square zero i'm seeing some charts coming in let's see if i can take them real quick and we continue Let's see, what, what do we have? Um, Puku said from Namibia, okay. Malia said from South Sudan, okay. Um, Joshua said key strategies for passing advanced taxation. Okay, I'll come to that. Sharifa said, I want tutorial on employee benefit and share valuation. Okay, we'll come to that. Um, Shilana said, this one, I'm the one you are talking to. Oh, <laughs> Sheila, how can I talk to you now? <laughs> I don't think I'm talking to you like Oli, right? Uh, I'm, we just have to be personal a little bit. So I hope you, you won't take beef. If you take beef, then I'm in trouble. Tiwa, Tiza said, great insight. Thanks. Always a pleasure. Um, Abdul said, oh, what to eat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of the things you'll be thinking about. What do I eat? This economy, if I look at the money left in my bank account and I look at how many days we have before the week, the, the month has ended. Now we are today is 15th. So if by this time, like you, you, your money is finishing, it means you don't have financial intelligence. Do you understand? You have to learn about money. Now, that would be another masterclass I'll do with you guys where we'll talk about money because we need to talk about that. Because you, you don't have to think about what you have to eat. When you are starting your life at a certain point, you have to think about it. But if you get to a certain point in life, you should be able to stop thinking about what to eat. 
I don't know though, but Evans Nalabi said Abdul. Okay, he's laughing at Abdul. And they said Inshira is like you are talking about my life. Oh, really? Today, people are getting personal for me. Oh, Ernest, <laughs> I hope you won't take it personal for me. Sheila said, Active Recalls really works for me because I'm um, of the timetable, because of the timetable I have. Okay, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, what else we got? Cothello said, So far, so good, sir. Especially reading one thing twice or more, the info is like to retain. It's likely to retain and retrieve effectively. That's good. That's good for you there. News style TV. As for me, I'm trying to develop a best model because previously strategies don't work. Hence, I use an implied contingency approach. Which one is that one? Implied contingency approach. And now this time you are doing contingency framework and these things. New style flash. Okay. Oh. Salome Kasempa said, Great tactics. Kindly share the screen on state of mind. Missed that point. Okay, I'm going to bring it up. Let me know what are the strategies you're learning. Let me know if you are getting some values from this video. And remember, you can always give us a thumbs up on the video. It helps us a lot. Get more engagement. And YouTube will be able to push the video. Facebook will push the video. And we also live on Twitter, I think. So we'll be able to push the video so we can reach as many uh, people as possible in that case. Timothy said, my study plan is in FRS. I normally watch the videos on session by session on the last diet on your portal. Then solve questions relating to those areas, uh, both ICA and ACCA question. Okay, that's great. That's great. Uh, once, and that is financial reporting. So with financial reporting, it means that going over the things, it's going to be crucial and solving a lot of questions will be the gateway for you to really understand. So that is where active recalls, space repetition will come in. Because if you have done IAS, whatever the heck, let's say you, don't, you did IAS 16, you have to solve various questions on IAS 16. And then as you solve more questions, you realize that many other standards are popping up and running through it in that case. Let me bring up my screen and let's go. So step number one, we said the state of your mind. That is crucial. Have the right state of mind. That is thinking about something whilst you are studying at the same time. That is a bad thing. When you're thinking about something else while studying, you're going to lose. Nothing you study will stick in your brain. Nothing. So you have to consciously block other thoughts as you study. Consciously block other thoughts as you study. And you cannot be studying whilst thinking about the fuel prices. You can't do anything about the fuel prices. You cannot. So stop thinking about it. You cannot uh, be thinking about rent. Oh, my rent is due. Ch change, ch check your finances. Check your finances and you'll be good in that regard. So someone said I should bring this screen up. Um, Salome Kasempa, I think you are okay now. That is the first point, state of mind in that regard. Then we go to the next one is going to be, you're going to love the next point. That would be the point number five, music. Ooh, music for the mind. Now, you have to be careful here because some of you, when I said music, no, some music has come in your head already. No, 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 no. Be careful here. Be careful here. You know, when you are in school, you realize that many of the things you can recollect today were put in music. And that it has a certain tone that it goes by. Like, like uh, uh, there are a lot of nursery rhymes that are put in music. Why? It's because... The music helps stimulate the mind to be able to increase your chances of what? Retaining the information. So one of the advanced strategies that can be used in retaining information is the kind of music that is playing in the background as you study. Now, you have to be careful here. It's not every music that you are going to use when you are studying, please. You cannot be studying and use any uh, high tempo hip hop, hip life music, or some of the gospel songs. Iradie, iradie, no, no, no. You you cannot be learning in that environment. So the thought here is 
to have some classical music, okay? Very low tempo music playing in the background stimulate your brain. Now, it's not everybody that this is going to work for sometimes in the initial stages, but you can find yourself as you proceed generally. But one, it is effective that the music that plays in the background stimulates the environment, stimulates your brain in order for you to increase your chances of understanding what you are studying. So I've met some students, they are like, should I learn with music? Then I ask them, what kind of music are you learning with? And they mention the music and they, they are playlist. And I'm like, what the heck? You cannot learn with that because your brain is not working in that wavelength. Okay, so you need to check. There are uh, Baroque uh, music. There are some classical music. And very low tempo music playing in the background, relaxing your brain to will enable you to study. You can't be studying with irradiate the kind of the kind of gospel music that are that are released in this part of the country in this part of the world. You can't learn with that because you, you are not you are not praising. That's not the time praise God. So it has to be cool, low tempo, eighty beats on a, a minute of music that is just running in the background to stimulate your brain. While she's steady. That is one of the things. Music. Music. So be mindful of the choice of music. Like I said, it doesn't mean, oh, you are a Christian. You are holy. Co so you are working then. Hey, on your playlist, come on, some beacious praises. No, no, no. Then when you're coming to learn, then it starts playing the praises. Then you are learning. Please, you are wasting time. Nothing will stick in your brain. As a matter of fact, you are wasting time. Stop. It won't work. So you have to select a music. That is cool, low tempoed, can play in the background, stimulate your environment, stimulate your brain to be able to assimilate and put you in the zone in order for you to really understand what you are learning. But this is going to be the next point that will really change everything. And that is going to be listen with your whole brain. Listen with your whole brain. That is the last but one point. Listen with your whole brain. What does that mean? Listen with your whole brain. That's very crucial. You see, your listening skill is very crucial when you are studying something. Because sometimes you are sitting in a lecture, like what we are having right now, it's a lecture. Are you listening to me with your whole brain or you are just casually listening to me. So it is very important that you listen with your whole brain. Now, when we say listen with your whole brain, what exactly do we mean? It goes with a nimok here. Listen carefully. When we say you are listening to the whole brain, it goes with the nimok here. Now, here H means halt. What does that mean? It means that make sure that you avoid all other distraction and be completely present. Avoid all other distractions. All other distractions and be completely present. So you are studying. Then your data is on. Then somebody is sending you a message. Kofi has sent you a message. Hey, <laughs> right now, something concert. And 99.99% and .99 of the messages that you receive, that you respond to rapidly are nonsense. They won't do anything for your life. But you respond to it because you are there learning. Kweku is in his house. Kweku is not learning, no. But Kweku has seen a joke. Then Kweku sent it to you on WhatsApp. You are learning, no. Then you hear, Kweni. Then you go and pick your phone. Hey, <laughs> this thing is funny. Before you know it, you are distracted from your learning. In Shira is talking, you are not listening to anything. Because Kweku has sent you something that you are listening to. But to listen with your whole brain means you halt everything. Consciously avoid, block all distractions. It goes back to the issue in relation to your point one, the state of your mind. But it goes beyond that to look at various distractions in your environment. You have to be present. 
be here with me. If you are in, if you are uh, in class, listening to lectures, be here. Put your phone on silence. If it is possible, put it in, in your bag somewhere so that you can be present in the class, be present in the environment. That is how you understand what is being taught. You cannot be replying to a joyous message whilst you are learning because your focus is distracted. You are distracted. You cannot multitask. Multitasking is a myth. There is nothing like multitasking. It is a myth. So that is the first thing. To listen with your whole brain, you must avoid all distractions and be completely present. That's it. That's it. E in our here is empathy. Empathy. What does that mean? It means that you need to put yourself in the shoes of the speaker. Okay? Put yourself in the shoes of the speaker. Okay? You put yourself in the perspective of the speaker. Why is the speaker speaking, talking like that? Why is he sharing the things that he is sharing? And the only way you can be empathetic about it is if you are completely present. Why, why is the speaker talking the way he's talking? Why is he sharing what he's saying there? It is very, very important. Because you see, tonation, voice inflection and all that, facial expression and all that affects the way you receive the information that you are listening to. So you need to put yourself, you need to look at the information from the perspective of the speaker. You need to be with the speaker on the same wavelength. It's not that your brain is antagonistic with it. No, you are on the same wavelength. You are getting the information from his perspective, not from your own perspective. But not only must you avoid distractions, not only must you put yourself in the perspective of the speaker, A means you need to anticipate. Anticipate. It, in, in other words, anticipation has to do with engaging the speaker. Engaging the speaker. Now, what does that mean? It means you try to look at, okay, per what the, the speaker is saying, what is he likely to say in the following word? What will be the next three lines? What will be the next four lines? Where is this conversation actually going? Because for instance, when, <laughs> when I'm talking to my students, for instance, and they have not done assignment, and I want to lambast them, like there is a way I start. And when I start, you know I'm going to lambast. It's called anticipation. Like knowing what a speaker is likely to talk about, likely to say. Now, it's not that you know the end, but then you are trying to predict what a speaker is likely to say. Now, you can only do that if you are completely also what? Present. It means you understand what he is saying right now. You are on the same wavelength with him, so you can predict the next word or the next thing that the speaker is going to say. And that is anticipation. It means you are engaging the speaker. You're on the same wavelength with the speaker. You can predict that the word that the speaker is likely to use, the phrase that the speaker is likely to use. When you do that, your brain opens up and it assimilates the things that you are studying very well. And then the last thing about listening with your whole brain is the issue about review. You review. So you review what you have been listening to all this while in that regard, it means you ask clarifying question. You ask clarifying questions. And you see how the things that you have listened to, the things that you have just learned, how are they applicable to you? How are they applicable to you? So that is the Sith strategy. Listen with your whole brain. Please, please. All your brain should be on what you are listening. Avoid distraction. Be on the same wavelength as the speaker. Anticipate the next phrase, 
the next word that the speaker is trying to use based on the phrase that the speaker is beginning with. But then you have to also ask clarifying questions. Clarifying questions. That is the Sith strategy or habit that you must adopt if you want to increase your memory. And certainly the last one, the only way you can listen with your whole brain, and one of the ways you can review what you have listened to with your whole brain, is the issue relating to notes taking. Number seven, take notes of notes taking. <laughs> take notes of notes taking. Or let me put it this way take notes of taking notes. Take note of taking notes. Take note of taking notes. One of the things that as a lecturer, I see students do a lot is they think they know. So I have been, uh, I've been, uh, I've been in class where I see students and they are teaching and they don't care about anything. They don't copy notes. They are just sitting down and listening and then they grab their phone and they are doing something else. And sometimes, uh, I remember those days, sometimes I have to literally take people phone, people's phone from them in class because it's too distractive. It's like they are working for the national fire service. It's a small message. Then they are smiling. I don't know if they are testing or whatever they are doing because they feel, oh, ah, this thing I know already. Please, that mindset kills you from the very first time you started it. So you have to take note of taking notes. Be conscious. You got to be conscious. You need to take notes. I don't care who you are. I don't care how many times you have studied what is being taught, what is being explained. You need to take notes and hand write your notes. It's very, very important. Handwritten notes. It's effective because as you are writing the notes, your brain is processing it. As you read the note, your brain is processing it. Sorry, as you write it out, your brain is processing it. So you, you don't just sit down and say, oh, Inshira is teaching. Inshira is talking. My, my, my lecturer is talking. I know everything. So I'm not writing anything. You are not going to remember anything. You will not remember anything. Note taking is the fundamental thing for you to really understand what is going to happen. So you have to know how to pick notes. It's very critical. It's very, very critical. It's going to be very critical. If you're going to use abbreviations, use them. If you're going to use short, uh, short hands or short cards, use them. But make sure you're writing clearly that you can see your own writing. Because there are sometimes people are like, oh, you know, uh, me, myself, I can't even see my notes. There are sometimes people do assignment and send to me. And when I read the thing, I ask myself, what is this? Because I cannot see it. Now, if I ask them, they themselves cannot see what they have written. So it is crucial for you to take note. Like I said, I don't care how many times you have learned something. Oh, IAS 16. If you are learning it again, you have to keep notes. Because immediately you grab a pen, a book, or your notepad, and you start writing, your brain is activated quickly and knows that what you are learning is crucial. What you are learning is basic. That is very important. But you see, you don't just get up and write by heart. You see, the fact that you are supposed to take notes doesn't mean you write everything the speaker is saying. Just write the crucial point. That's all. Just write a key point. You don't have to write everything. Like there are some of you, when you're reading a book, you highlight everything. You highlight everything. Then the book inside has become gone. No, you don't have to highlight everything because if you highlight everything, then nothing is important. You, If you try to write everything the speaker is saying, then whatever the speaker is saying will not all be important. So you have to learn how to take notes by writing out only the crucial points. 
only the key points, only the critical points. Because you see, the rate at which you write is slower than the rate at which the speaker speaks or someone speaks. Because the words churn out in a minute by a speaker is 10 times more than the words that can be written down by a listener. So it means you just need the key points. Injira, how do I know this is the key point? You will know because you are listening attentively. You will know because the tone of the, the tonation of the speaker, the voice inflection of the speaker, the expression on the face of the speaker, these things will inform you about how important it is. Now, sometimes, I don't know, uh, I, I tell some of my private students especially about some of these things. There are certain times when I'm explaining something if you are listening carefully, you realize that when I get to a point in time, my tone changes. Okay, my voice inflection is different. It could be very low, very down. Then there are sometimes my voice inflection is very high in that case. So you have to know, and there are things that I emphasize on. So you realize that I have made a statement. I have made a statement. I have made a statement. Then I say again the first statements that I made. It means that. What I said, what I've repeated is a crucial thing. So you don't try to write all the four statements I've made. You just have to write the first statement that I made. That is taking notes or take notes of taking notes. You have to write down things. I don't care how you think you are, how sharp you think you are. You're just deceiving yourself. Like I said, I've seen students like that. They sit in class, they don't copy any notes. They close and then... They pick up their car keys and uh, go away. You put performance evaluation test down or you give an assignment and they scored close to zero. Yeah, because you see, memory is not about who the heck you are or how good you think you are. You must take notes. No matter who you are, you must take notes. No matter what you think you know, you must take notes. And it is very important. It is very important. These are some strategies that we want to share our thoughts with you on in that regard. Any questions for me, please? So number one, the state of your mind. Number two, your posture. Number three, spaced repetition and active recalls. That is four and five. That is four. Number five, music. Number six, listen with your whole brain, the hear mindset. And then number seven, take notes of taking notes. If there is anything I want you to take away, it's number one, your emotions. And number seven, the notes taking part. Because I just can't get it. Why people will sit in my class and not copy notes? Why? They are supermen or superwomen or their brain is too sharp. Because when I give performance evaluation tests or I give assignment, the things they write, I know that, oh, you didn't even take notes. No wonder you are writing the kind of things you are writing to me. So take notes. Be conscious about it. Be present. Now, there is a bonus one I want to share with you. I know you're going to love it. It's to use uh, your sense of smell. Use your sense of smell. Okay, use your sense of smell. Let me see if I could even put that under another point. <laughs> Let me see, I'm seeing some chats coming in. Let me take that as well, then I'll look at the bonus. What do we have? <sighs> By the way, Sir, please, I'm waiting for your call out part of this. Okay. Salome said, uh, thank you, sir. I'm okay. Okay. I like that, sir. Okay. More grace from Stephen. Thank you. David said, after studies, I record the things I learned and it has helped a lot, Papa. Okay, that's fine. That's not taking, you know. That's not taking. After studies, I record the things I've learned and replay it in my free time and it has helped a lot. Thank you, Shira Premium. You are the best. Thank you. 
Timothy said, they will highlight and highlight even full stops. <laughs> and Timothy, you are crazy. <laughs> they will highlight and highlight full stop. Eh? And you wonder what, what kind of thing they are highlighting generally at the end of the day. Now, so remember for those of you um, who are looking at uh, as we are having or we still have copies of our uh, book on, you know, financial reporting and corporate reporting that you can uh, look at because that helps a lot. Uh, it will help you to be able to prepare well for the uh, examination. So we have the financial reporting, we have the corporate reporting, we have the advance audit and assurance as well available. Public sector is also available. You can call or WhatsApp us on the number scrolling below the screen and you'll be able to uh, stay with us in that regard. So let me give you my bonus points on these strategies. So your sense of smell, Now, you see, sense or your faculty to determine or perceive an odor or sense has a way to affect your brain. Now, there is a science behind it. There's a science behind it. So your sense of smell is something that you need to look out for. For instance, something like lavender, okay? The smell of lavender, is it helps you to relax and put you to sleep. Okay, it relax, it helps you to relax and put you to sleep. Lavender, the smell of it, the smell of it. Then peppermint. Now don't ask me what are some of these, you know, you should know some of these flavors. Peppermint helps you to concentrate better. Helps to concentrate better. So your house, your study, where you are studying, what kind of smell is there? What kind of odor is oozing out of the place? <laughs> That's what we are saying here. So, so a smell of peppermint helps you to what? concentrate better. Okay, helps you to concentrate better. Rosemary, not your girlfriend, Rosemary, or sister, Rosemary, or sister. Rosemary helps with your memory. helps with your memory so it means that where you study you could have some you know peppermint rosemary now rosemary is in the family of peppermint flavors if you are good at uh you know about flavors but but that is it the smell around you the scents around you even affect your memory can you imagine that science is so beautiful and uh if you really know how to do these things it really helps you. It really helps you. So you want to increase your memory. You want to concentrate more. What is the smell around you? All right. Imagine you are learning and then your wife is cooking in the kitchen and you know the aroma of the food has taken over the house. <laughs> you can't study. Okay. You can't study. You can't study. All right, because that kind of aroma is not for studying. It's not for memory. It's for eating, okay? Because your uh, the enzymes, your salivary gland and all that would just be coming up and say, hey, we need to eat, we need to eat, forget about food, we need to eat, we need to eat, we need to eat, forget about food. So your environment, the scent in your environment, the odor or whatever it is in your environment, the smell in your environment also affects your memory. All right. So these are some of the advanced strategies that I believe that if you should implement today and be conscious about it in the next 21 days, you can start seeing some changes in your life. Your emotions be in the right state of mind. I cannot overemphasize that. Two, your posture, very crucial, very basic. Three, Spaced repetition. Be conscious about it. Listen to the thing over and over again. Play it over and over and review it over and over again. And then write it out. Active recourse. Try to write out. Try to write out. It helps you to remember what you are learning. Music. Like I said, don't go and put, no, no, no. 
that is not music for learning. That's not music for learning. Be careful about the music. Then you listen with your whole brain. Very crucial. We cannot overemphasize the importance of that. And then you take note of taking notes. Write the key points whilst you are listening to the a lecture, whilst you are uh, watching something. Put the key points down. It helps you a lot. It helps you a lot. Then your sense of smell. Your sense of smell can help you in that particular case. So these are some of the things we want to share with you uh, in this masterclass on your memory and the habits that you must adopt to study. Like I said in the introduction, you are not too old to remember anything. The brain capacity is enormous. And as a matter of fact, the more you age, the sharper your memory should be. Yeah, that's, that's what has been proven scientifically, all right? The more you age, the sharper your memory has to be. But because of a lot of distractions and you are not conscious of removing those distractions, it makes your memory to become weak. But the purpose of this training and this discussion we had today is to enable you to consciously try to control your memory, control your mind, control your sense of smell, your environment and everything so that you can increase your memory and ultimately understand what you're doing very well. Let me know any questions for me, please. Any questions for me? Abdul Mazouk said, God bless you, sir. Amen, Abdul. God bless you too. Kazaila Firi said, thank you, sir, for the tips. Always a pleasure. Emmanuel Owusu said, please, my study plan is for learning new topics before the lecturer teaches. Is it the best? Or do you think I should use my timetable to revise instead? It's, it's okay, but you need to just have a blend of it. You cannot always study the next thing. How about reviewing what has been done in the past? The space repetition thing, the active recall thing. So you need to have an overhaul of your study plan where there are days in your study plan where you are not learning the next thing the lecturer is going to teach, but then you are reviewing the things that has been done previously. If not, then your memory is going to be low. Your ability to re remember or recollect information will be low. Does that make sense? So that is not bad. That is one side of being ahead because that helps you to be active in the class. That helps you to engage the uh, lecturer as well in class. But you must set time aside in your study plan where you are reviewing previous things, you are practicing active recall, you are solving some questions, and you are going over the things that have been done in the past. If not, you will end up seeing that you are in week seven, for instance, but then things that were done in week one, you don't remember it. Not because you don't know it, but because you've not set time to have a spaced reputi uh, repetition in that case. So, Emmanuel. That's what I would say there. Uh, it's good, but restructure your uh, study plan and then put, have some days, some periods where you are reviewing things that has been done in the past so that you'll be wholly or rounded ultimately at the end of the day. Steven said, uh, please, how can I get your study packs in Nigeria? If you want our book, delivery can be arranged for you. You can call or WhatsApp. 050 I'm going to put that up on the screen in a moment. If you're outside Accra, did I say Accra? Can you imagine that? If you're outside Ghana, the code is plus 233. Let me bring that up. There you go. So 050 You can WhatsApp that line and a delivery can be arranged for you to get uh, the book. If you're outside Ghana, the country code is plus two three three. That way you don't bring the zero. Uh, but if you're in Ghana, you know, you're in Ghana. So you just dial and go away. So that's it about that. Um, any other questions for me? Let's see if I touch on everything here. Okay. So that is it about that. And uh, that is what I wanted to bring to your knowledge today as we are in the Sith seventh week 
uh, our, based on our study plan, we are in the seventh week and uh, see how you can structure out. I can guarantee you that if you take some of these things right now and implement them right now, in less than three weeks, you will start seeing results generally because habits is formed continuously in 21 days. So if you, be, if you become conscious about your memory, you become conscious about your environment, you become conscious about your mind, you become conscious about notes taking, you become conscious about some of these things well, you're going to be a rock star. All right? You're going to be a rock star. And whatever you study, majority of them, 90%, 95% will stick. How happy will you be? How happy will you be? And, and that, is, that is the point that uh, everybody has to strive to be at. Where you pick a book, read everything, or read a chapter, and after one week or two weeks, the chapter you read, 90%, 95% is still in your head. Now, not word for word, because sometimes you have to paraphrase it in your own understanding. That is also one of the techniques and that notes taking. You need to paraphrase what you are learning and put it in your own words. But you remember 80% or 90% or 95% of what you studied, what you read a week ago, two weeks ago. Listen, you will, you will really be excited about it and you will become successful as quickly as possible. And that's how, what we are looking out for. So that's it about that. Emmanuel said, all right, sir, thank you. Always a pleasure. Um, Sheila Na said, wow, thank you very much. You are the best. Thank you, Sheila. All right, so that's it about that today. Um, Alicia Abdul, Kofi Single, Kwame, Constance, Abdul, Amevo Benjamin, and all of you guys with a thumbs up on Facebook. Thank you very much. And all of you guys with a thumbs up on YouTube also. Thank you very much. So we're going to conclude here today. I'm going to be having some live sessions, possibly from next week, uh, Q&A sessions on uh, Instagram live. So we'll be announcing about that possibly before the week ends. So if you're not following me on Instagram, you can follow me on Instagram. We're going to be having some live Q&A sessions where you'll be able to jump on live with me on, on Instagram then you ask any questions, something that you want me to share my thought on live on Instagram, and then we can assist you better to prepare for your examination and pass the examination. So that's it. Thank you for joining me on the live stream. And I'll be coming your way again on Friday uh, as we try to finish up with our IFRS masterclass on the non-current asset part. So Friday, 4.30 p.m., corporate reporting students, financial reporting students, advanced financial reporting students, all of you guys, you're going to come back on Friday at 4.30 p.m. as we continue with our discussion. Thank you for joining us. Stay safe and stay blessed. Bye-bye.